Hello, John. All right, Hello. Victor. Hello, how are you? Okay, you're you have your coffee, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, me too. I have a big a big cup. I even shaved. Oh, this is great, Victor. You coming. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to you, dear friend. Yeah, I'm really trying to engage the Chinese community. Uh, we're having a webcast next week on the, on what's new in cerebral vascular surgery in China. Uh, we're going to get some good, good cerebral vascular surgeons from China. And I think the USA will be very interested in what they present. Yes. Uh, I'm excited, Victor, but I know it's kind of hard for you to be excited because it's 5.30 in the morning. Five thirty. Five thirty right now. Well, dedication, dedication, man. <laughs> but uh, you know, I get the impression uh, uh, that the Chinese want to do more video. It, uh, that's the impression I get more than in the U.S. That, as far as I've seen. Have you met you met Victor, right? Uh, Yen Dong? Uh, hello, Professor Victor. Nice to meet hello. you. Uh, hello, My nice to meet you. We have you here. Hello, nice to meet you, Yen Dong. I, you know, I think Victor will appreciate your dissections a lot more than me. Uh, oh? <laughs> being, well, because he's obviously very experienced and he's done many himself. Uh, yeah. I'm sure for conferences, right, Victor? You've done them for con I'm sure you've done it for a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, uh, I, I've been three times in China. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from China. Yeah. Yeah, she's from outside Beijing, right? No, not of Beijing. I. You know, now I am a PhD candidate of a university in Shanghai. Oh, Shanghai, okay. I now I am a PhD candidate. And where are you doing the dissections? Mm, where is your, your cadaver lab? Yeah, no. This, actually, this this lab is run by one company. Uh, this is this this lab is not the lab of my school or my hospital. Yes, um, it's hot hot tree, hot tree, right? Yeah, oh. hot tree. Yeah. Hot tree. Have you heard of that uh, company, Victor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big, I, big company. I want to send to you. You know, in China, we have so many, many, we have so many, many lab, but they are not open. Mm -hmm. It's a big problem. You know, I was telling you, uh, Yang Dong, Victor, that uh, there's not many good dissections on, on the internet. Yeah, would, yeah, would you yeah. agree on that, Victor? Yeah, yeah. We can what? You don't see, uh, you don't see too many. Do you, Victor, yeah. online dissection? Uh, well, I, I have been many dissections here in Mexico, but uh, online, uh, they, uh, 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 no, I like no. Uh, no. no. Okay. But I think it's much better to show a, a, a live dissections that only pictures is much better to see the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can learn too much seeing pictures. Yeah, you, if you only see the picture, you will miss many details. Yes. So you have to you have to learn anatomy from the lab dissection. Yeah. And uh, I I do not like to I do not like to show people the conventional dissection, for example, the transcommonous approach or the terminal approach or the far lateral approach, because you know already we have so many, many people show you these dissections and the anatomy, 
I'm sure my dissection is not superior to them. So I want to show people the some real dissections. For example, the last dissection I conducted the middle colonial fossil approach to pterygoid pelagian fossil, implant temporal fossil, and the pelagian. I think it's unique. It I think it's a unique dissection. And uh, in my second workshop, I I I uh, I show people the implant temporal fossil approach type A. I know this is a very, very common dissection in ENT, in ENT. But, you know, after, during that dissection, after I remove the styroid process, I show people, I show some very rare structures. For example, the cervical sympathetic ganglion, cervical sympathetic trunk, and uh, this sympathetic, sympathetic nerve, wrapping the carotid artery. And also I show people the, branches of C1, C2 spine, spinal nerve, which join, which joins, which enter the hypoglossal nerve and the answer of the cardis. And also I show people the, the Jacobson nerve and the tympanic nucleus. I show people the cochlear aqueduct. I show people superior and the inferior ganglions of glossal pharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve. And I show people all branches of vagus nerve except the anodal nerve, which means I show you the uh, the communication branch connecting vagus nerve with accessory nerve, hypo and the hypoglossal nerve. And I show people the superior laryngeal nerve, internal laryngeal nerve, external laryngeal nerve. And I also I show people the pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve. I think it's a very, very unique. It's rare to see this, this anatomy in that dissection. Yeah, I think uh, that, uh, 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 the, the topic of, it, of dissection next week is the cranial vertebral junction and the posterior lateral elite approach. I am not going to show people bilateral approach. I am going to show people each muscle in, in the suboccipital area and the layer innervations. I am going to show people, I'm going to show people the C0, C1 facet, C1, C2 facet, C2, C3 facet and uh, how to transport the vertebral artery. And I want to show people this anterior and the posterior ramine of C1, C2 spinal nerve. I want to show people this anterior and the posterior root of C1, C2 spinal nerve. I want to show people the ganglion of C1, C2. I want to show people the C1, C2 fixation technical. And also I want to show people how to Skeletonize the jugular bubble while keeping the integrity of mastoid cortex. Yeah. Yeah, th this is very useful material for uh, young brain surgeons and also for residents. I think uh, now it's much better to show videos than only slides. The, uh, I think this is of uh, great value for all the community of uh, neurosciences. Uh, congrats for doing this uh, uh, material, uh, this academic material. Well, this is going to be valuable to have you here, Victor. Now, uh, um, Yang Dong, yeah. Do you want? How do you want to work it? Do you want Victor uh, interrupting you and, and comment, having you comment, or do you want to keep going? Or how do you want to work it? Pardon? Would you? Do you want Victor to kind of interrupt you if he wants to say something, or would you rather finish and then discuss it? Uh, I think if there, if there, if there are some comments or questions from audience, is better. Okay. Yeah. I think I think at the end. Okay. Be 
Yes. Yeah, and, and it, believe me, there's a lot more people watching on YouTube because they don't have to come in for this. I put it on YouTube also. So, okay, we'll start. No, Ready to start? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. And also, John, you know, this presentation now is webcasting in China. Yeah, I think maybe there, there are many Chinese people now watching for this presentation. And I think maybe I will have some questions from China audience. Oh, good. Well, if you want to answer in Chinese, that's fine. If, okay. if they don't speak, that's fine. No problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Excuse me. Four, Excuse me. Four. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to ask my Chinese colleague to, to study webcasting in China, okay? Oh, okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Hello, Ma Gong. Okay, hold on. Are you ready, ah. Yan Dong? Yeah, okay, now it's okay. John is okay, okay now. 10, 9, Good morning from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. It's really as beautiful as it is here. Uh, but the sun's not even up. It's uh, very early. Anyways, uh, we have another, the third in the webcast of uh, of Yen Dong Su. He's doing a, a series. Uh, and we are blessed with the presence of a very noted uh, neuroanatomist from Mexico. We got him up very early. And he's going to be interacting with Yen Dong. Yen Dong is talking of anato ana uh, excuse me, anatomy of extra temporal facial nerve, and uh, we welcome Yan Dong. Welcome, Yan Dong. Yeah, thank you, John. And uh, thank you, Professor Victor. It's my great honor to have Professor Victor here. And I will share my screen. Yeah, that's my screen. Yeah, hello, dear colleagues. And uh, this is Dr. Su Yan Dong from China. Now I am a PhD candidate of Naval Medical University, Shanghai Hospital, well, Shanghai, China. And I am a young neurosurgeon. I love dissection of head and neck region. So today I'm, I am very happy to share you some real anatomy of extra temporal facial nerve. Before this presentation, before my presentation, I have to say, I have to tell you that I'm not today. I'm not going to talk about the five major branches of extra temporal facial nerve. Let's a let a cervical branch, marginal mandibular branch, buccal branch, zygomatic branch, and the temporal branch. Because already we have so many many people show you beautiful dissection and the anatomy of these five branches, and they are well known branches. You do not need me. You do not need me to repeat this anatomy. And also, I'm not going to talk about the terminal branches of facial nerve, which enter the nematic muscle. You know, the, because, it, because this anatomy is intimately related to plastic surgery, and I am a neurosurgeon, it's beyond my scope. But uh, maybe someday, if I can do some plastic operations, such as face, face lift procedure, or the facial rehabilitation operations, I will show you the anatomy of mimetic muscle and the terminal branches of facial nerve. So today I want to talk about some branches of facial nerve that are less well known, which means maybe you have Maybe you have never heard these branches be before, or maybe you have heard these branches before, but you have never seen these branches before. And uh, like the lab dissections I have conducted in the past two weeks, I usually, I want to show you real dissections because you can easily find the dissection videos of conventional neurological approaches. For example, the transcarmelous approach, terrenal approach, or the phylateral approach. And I think you don't need me to show you these conventional dissections. 
So go back to our topic today. Mm, to understand the facial nerve, I think you have to know each bunch of you have to know each bunch of of facial nerves. So from this picture, you can see the first bunch of facial nerve is the great superficial pitocin nerve, which leave the facial nerve at the geniculate ganglion. And then the second bunch is the nerve to stapedius muscle. This, this nerve arises from the mastoid segment just under the second genu. And then we have called the tympany and the, the auricular branch of Meca's nerve. This also we call this nerve the another nerve. And the immediately after the facial nerve exit the stylomastoid fragment, we have the posterior auricular nerve. And then the facial nerve enter the parotid gland and divides the parotid gland into superficial and the deep nobulus. And uh, this nerve, this nerve also send some, also send a uh, digestive and the stylohyoid branches before enter the uh, parotid gland. And after the nerve enters the parotid gland, we have the bifurcation of facial nerve and also the five terminal branch of facial nerve. And uh, bear in mind, only facial nerve cuts inside the Parotid gland here in this segment, we have so many, many communication branches connecting the facial nerve with um, greater auricular nerve or and the uh, auricular temporal nerve. I will show you, I will show you this branch letter or this nerve letters. And uh, also we know, and uh, also we know some branches of facial, facial nerve join other nerves in their cases. So we have to understand the relating nerve. For example, the maxillary nerve and the spinal palatine ganglion and the mandibular nerve and the submandibular gland. In my mind, in my mind, uh, everybody should know the fiber components of facial nerve because this is the key issue too understand the function of each branch of facial nerve. And we know the facial nerve contains four fiber components. They are general somatic affluent, or the so-called general somatosensory fiber, and the general visceral affluent, or the so-called general visceral motor fiber, and the special visceral affluent, or the so-called special visceral motor fiber, or the special visceral Afferent, the so-called special visceral sensory fiber, and the, the posterior auricular nerve. Posterior auricular nerve contains the general somatosensory fiber and provide the sensory information of external auditory glare and the auric. The sensory input goes to trigeminal nuclei, nuclei and the, the Greater superficial pitocin nerve and the quarter tympany connect the general visceral motor fiber and uh, control the secretion of sublingual, submandibular, and the lacrimal glands, and also the gland, the tiny tiny gland on the mucosa of nasal and the oral cavity, and uh, the motor output. The motor fiber, the motor output is from the superior sedimentary nucleus. And uh, the posterior auricular nerve, stapedius, digestive, and the stylohyoid branches and the terminal branches of facial nerve contain the special visceral motor fiber and uh, control the movement of the mimetic muscle. Stapedius, the posterior belly of digestion, and the stylohyoid muscle. And the, the motor output or motor output is from the facial nucleus. So finally, the GSPN and the quarter tympany contain the special visceral sensory <coughs> fiber, uh, which is from the 
test the sensation of palate and the anterior two thirds of the tongue. And you know the, you know the sensory input, sensory input goes to upper part of nucleus of solitary tract. So this, so this is the overview of actual temporofacial nerve on left side. You see this is this is the ear. This is uh, the auric. This is the man, mandibular angle. Here in the stylomastoid foramen, the main trunk of facial nerve, bifurcation of facial nerve, temporal facial trunk, and cervical facial trunk. And this is cervical cervical branch, this is marginal mandibular branch, this is lower buccal branch, and this is upper buccal branch, and here the jagmatic branch, and this is the temporal branch. All right, you see, you can see there are so many, many temporal branches of facial nerve, and already I removed the whole parotid gland. Here you can see this parotid duct. And from this picture, I want to I want to tell you some structures you may encounter during the parotid dectomy. We know there are no important structures inside the superficial lobe of parotid gland. But uh, when you are here, the retro mandibular space, where we have the deep lobe of parotid gland, here we have so many, many important structures. The most important structure is, is facial nerve. And if you go to this area, you will encounter the external carotid artery. And also you can see there are so many, many arteries arise from external carotid artery and go anterior to supply the mesentery muscle, go posterior to supply the auric and uh, go to parotid gland directly. So during parotid dectomy, you have to cut this branch one by one to avoid hemorrhage. And in uh, and another important structure you will encounter in the retromandibular space is the retromandibular band. In this case, this is a very typical retromandibular band. This is a superficial temporal band. Here, got inferior continue as the posterior trunk of retromandibular band, and here we see the posterior auricular band join the posterior trunk of retromandibular band and form the external jugular band. And this is the anterior trunk of retromandibular band. This trunk go anterior inferiority and join the facial band and then enter the carotid sheath to join the internal jugular band. And at the tips here, you can see the posterior auricular artery this artery is quite, this artery is intimately related to facial nerve. And also you hear this is occipital artery. Every time you know when you see the occipital artery, already you know the styloid diaphragm is opened. And this is a picture to show you the, to show you the cervical facial trunk and its branches. From here you can see more clear the how the anterior trunk of retromandibular band go enter the inferior and join the facial band and then pierce the carotid sheath and enter the internal jugular band. And then this picture show you the temporal facial trunk of facial nerve. This is this is transverse facial artery to localize the jagmatic branch of facial nerve and this is jagmatic artery. So you see here, this is this is external carotid artery and the superficial temporal artery and the auricular temporal nerve. Please pay attention to this area. You can see some branch. Please pay attention to this area. I will zoom in. I will zoom in this area. And you see, you can see there are some nerve there are some nerve um, go out from the back side of facial nerve and uh, wrap the neck of of and wrap the neck of condylar process of mandibular bone and then go medially to join the auricular temporal nerve. So this nerve 
These nerves are the communication branch. These nerves, these nerves are communication branches between the facial nerve and the auricular temporal nerve. And uh, usually this nerve, this nerve arise, arise from the temporal facial trunk. And uh, usually there are four to five of them. The function of the function of the, of these communication branches is not very clear. Somebody believe they transmit the proper reception of mimetic muscles to trigeminal nerve. My personal idea is that, you know, during my dissection, I usually find many, many tiny branches arising from facial nerve and enter the party gland directly. And the, I think maybe these tiny branches carry the general visceral motor fiber or auricular temporal nerve, which go to the facial nerves through these communication branches. And uh, with, a big, with a big magnification, you can see more clear, you can see clear how these branches join the auricular temporal nerve. And also, also we can see here some branches arise from the temporal, auricular temporal nerve and the posteriorly. I will discuss these branches later. And this, if we push the, the nerve back, we can see the main trunk of the auricular temporal nerve, where this nerve leave the, leave the inflow temporal fossa and enter the retromandibular space. So let's go to these branches, these nerves. You know, the auricular temporal nerve provide the sensory innervation of external auditory canal. And uh, usually the auricular temporal nerve go to anterior aspect of external auditory canal and the posterior auricular nerve and the greater auricular nerve go to inferior aspect of external auditory canal and the greater auricular nerve go to posterior aspect of external auditory canal and the lesser occipital nerve go to superior aspect of external auditory canal. And from this picture, you can see how the, from this picture, you can see how the auricular temporal nerve provide the sensory innervation of external auditory canal. And also here you can see one branch here you can see one tiny nerve go inferiorly. This nerve, this nerve is the communication branch between the auricular temporal nerve. Here is this branch. You see this nerve communicate the auricular temporal nerve and the greater auricular nerve. Here you see this greater auricular nerve and you see one branch go superiorly and to join here, go further here and to join the auricular temporal nerve. And uh, in this picture, we can see this is styro mastoid fragment. And uh, this is the main trunk of facial nerve. And uh, you see the digestive and the styro hyoid branch of facial nerve. Um, I'm not going to talk about this branch. I am going to talk about this branch. You see here, one, one, small, one small nerve. One small nerve connect the facial nerve and the greater auricular nerve. You know, there are many, many, there are many, many branch connecting the greater auricular nerve and the facial nerve. This nerve can end at this side, can end at this side, can also can end at this side. And even this nerve can end here. You see this is posterior auricular nerve. So this is the communication branches between the greater auricular nerve and the facial nerve. And also here you can see, you can see the greater, the branch of greater auricular nerve go to the inferior and the posterior aspect of external auditory canal. And uh, in this picture, I want to show you the first, the first branch of astrotemporal, astrotemporal facial nerve, which is the 
posterior or regular temporal nerve. I know this nerve, this nerve, the posterior or regular nerve is well known. It's well known in literature and the textbook. But uh, few people show you, uh, few people show you the posterior or regular nerve in dissection. So this is dilomastoid graben, and you see immediately the you see the posterior or regular nerve uh, go off from the facial nerve it immediately after the stylometoid graben and uh, go posteriorly. And we know the posterior or regular nerve contains two fiber components. One is the general somatosensory fiber, and another is special visceral motor fiber. And uh, this is the sensory branch. This is a sensory branch of our posterior auricular nerve. You see the sensory branch of our posterior auricular nerve uh, go to inferior aspect of external auditory canal just next to the trigger pointer. So this structure, this is trigger pointer. And this is trigger pointer. The trigger pointer is a triangular shape cartilage of anterior inferior aspect of external auditory canal. And uh, many, many ENT surgeons use the trigger pointer to localize the facial nerve. And uh, I usually, usually I find the sensory branch of posterior auricular nerve enter the external auditory canal just next to the trigger pointer. And uh, you can see, you can see the posterior auricular nerve go further posteriorly and uh, send, send the branches to innervate the posterior auricular muscle and, for, and go further posteriorly and send the muscle to occipitalis muscle. And also here you can see the branch of greater auricular nerve go to the inferior and the posterior, posterior aspect of external auditory canal. So go posteriorly, we see, we see how the posterior auricular nerve innervate the occipital, occipitalis muscle. So we know usually the terminal branches of facial nerve go to mimetic muscle through their backside, except the mentalis, the metal angularis, and the buccinator muscle. But I usually find that the the posterior auricular nerve enter the occipitalis from its outer surface. And uh, this, is, this is another specimen on right side. This is inferior, this is superior, this is anterior, this is posterior, this is external auditory canal, this is mastoid tip. You see this is the this is stylomastoid brevin, this is main trunk of facial nerve, and then this is the trigger pointer I I said I tell I told you just now, and then this is posterior auricular nerve. You see in this case we have very, very big sensory branch of posterior auricular nerve. And then this is the motor branch of posterior auricular nerve go to the posterior auricular muscle and occipitalis muscle. So this is on this is on left side. I already I removed the whole air cells inside the mastoid cavity. This is facial nerve, and you see here a tissue here. This is a temporal mastoid suture, and I don't know whether whether you can appreciate uh, whether you can appreciate there is a very very tiny tiny branch arise right, from the facial nerve and go along the posterior or um, external auditory canal and go out from the temporal mastoid surgery. I think this should be the auricular branch of vagus nerve or the so-called another nerve. And uh, you know from you know test the textbook and paper said there is there is a nestomosis between the posterior auricular nerve and uh, the another nerve. But it's so difficult. It's so difficult to show you this anatomy. And the next, we and the next, we are going to the cord tympani. 
I know you are, I know everybody is familiar with quarter timpani in the tympanic cavity and uh, in the inflow temporal fossa, but uh, but uh, I but I know many many of you don't know the quarter timpani of this segment between the tympanic cavity and the uh, inflow temporal fossa. So you see, this is the V3, the graven omari, and this is middle meningeal arch in the graven spinals. And posterior to graven spinals, we have, we should have, we should have spinal spine. And uh, you see, uh, after the caudal tympani, leave the tympanic cavity, it go anteriorly, it go anteriorly on the, on the anterior surface of bony eustachian tube and uh, then curves inside the pitot tympani circle and uh, then media to the spinal spine and then enter the inflow temporal fossa. So this is the curse of quarter tympani inside the temporal bone. I know it's, this is not a common anatomy. And uh, this is the full curse of the quarter tympani along this facial nerve to tympanic cavity and then the, the anterior part and, and then anterior to eustachian tube and then the inflow temporal fossa. And uh, also I want to show you the anatomy of GSPN. I want to show you the anatomy of GSPN. I know you are I know so many, many textbooks show you the GSPN of this segment from the genicular ganglion to, to here, the trigeminal nerve. But what happened when this nerve, but what happened when this nerve go, go behind the trigeminal nerve? You see this GSP, the GSPN go further anteriorly and this is carotid, this is a carotid artery. This is a carotid artery, or the, this is a carotid artery overlying the foramen asylum. And uh, you see the GSPN go for the anterior on the lateral aspect of carotid, um, carotid artery. And uh, here we should have the deep pitocin nerve join the GSPN. You see this is foramen asylum, this is GSPN, and uh, we should have deep pitocin nerve join the GSPN to form the leading nerve and the leading nerve curves inside the leading canal and go further anteriorly to and then enter the pterygoid palatine fossa to enter the spinal palatine ganglion. So the last topic the last to, the last topic I want to talk about is that's the communication branch between diagrammatical temporal nerve and the temporal branch of spatial nerve really exist. Uh, from my experience, my answer is no, at least not, not in every case, not in every case. So I want to show you this paper. You know, this is a beautiful paper from Professor Milanda's group which was published in this year. And uh, in their study, they found that anastomosis between the diagrammatical temporal nerve and the temporal branch of facial nerve exists in every, can be observed in every specimen. So let's go to the picture in their paper. You see, this picture, they say this is the communication branch between the temporal branch of facial nerve and the medical temporal nerve. But I, but I, 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 I do not think so because you see, still there are so many, many connective, connective tissue around the facial nerve. And here, this region is the spinal diagrammatic structure. And usually we have many, we have very, very dense uh, fibrous tissue along this spinal diagrammatic 
diagrammatical structure. And I think that this should be the fiber band. This should, this should not be the communication branch between the between the diagrammatical temporal nerve and the temporal temporal facial nerve. And uh, this is another picture in their this is another picture in their paper. So this is the right side. And already they elevate the inter interfacial fatty pad. And uh, they find one nerve. They think this is the this is the uh, communication branch between the facial nerve, the temporal branch of facial nerve and the diagrammatical temporal nerve here. They think this is a metamorphosis between these two nerves. And then uh, this is interoperative picture. You see one here, one here. But I'm one I'm one hundred percent sure. This is not this is this should be the main trunk of diagrammatical temporal nerve. This this is not the anastomosis between the facial nerve and the diagrammatical facial diagrammatical temporal nerve. Because the diameter of this nerve is is more equal to the diagrammatical temporal nerve. And uh, if there are if there if there is any communication branch between the facial nerve and the diagrammatical temporal nerve, the diameter should be very 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 small. I'm one hundred I'm one hundred percent sure this is not the anatomosis. This is the main trunk of diagrammatical temporal nerve. And also, you know the textbook. The textbook will tell you the diagrammatical temporal nerve goes through the lateral orbital wall. But I find in many cases, I find in many, many cases, uh, some diagrammatical temporal nerve do not pierce the lateral orbital wall. They arise, they arise superiorly from the inflow, inflow orbital fissure and the curse is along the spinal diagrammatic structure and then join another branch. And also, also in my during, also from, uh, in my dissection or lab surgery, I I often find the auricular temporal nerve end here. I often find the I often find the very small auricular temporal nerve, which means the auricular temporal nerve ends here. They do not go follow up superiorly, and uh, and uh, in this case you can and uh, in this situation you will find a very very big diagrammatical temporal diagrammatical temporal nerve temporal nerve go posteriorly and provide the sensory information on this region. So so. This is my presentation presentation today, but I I I want to I want to say something about my last Saturday's dissection. First, I apologize for poor voice of of this dissection, and uh, it was a common dissection before I removed the styloid process. But I want to tell you. After I remove the styloid process, I show you many interesting structures. I sh I have show you the tympanic branch of I have show you the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve or the so called Jacobus nerve, and I show you I have show you the tympanic canonicus, and I have show you the superior and the inferior ganglions of glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve. And I have shown you all branches of Maker's nerve except another nerve, which means I show I have shown you the the communication branches connecting the Maker's nerve with accessory nerve and hypoglossal nerve, and I have shown you the superior laryngeal nerve, external laryngeal nerve, internal laryngeal nerve, pharyngeal branch of Maker's nerve, and you cannot believe during. During this dissection, I show you the I show you the branches of C one C two spinal nerve which enter the hypoglossal nerve and the ansa cervicalis. 
And also I, in this dissection, I have shown you the surgical sympathetic ganglion and the surgical sympathetic trunk and also the sympathetic nerve wrapping around the carotid artery to enter the tissue bone. It's my, strong recommend, it's my strong recommendation for you to go back to this video and you will find many interesting structure. So the last, uh, the last thing I want, the last thing I want to say is that next week I will continue my lab dissection, and uh, the topic of this dissection will be the cranial vertebral junction and the posterior lateral elite approach. Uh, in this dissection, I am not going to show you the far lateral approach. It's so easy. I am going to show you. Uh, every muscle in the suboccipital area and the layer in the machines. I am going to show you the C0, C1 facet, C1, C2 facet, and the C2, C3 facet. I want to show you how to transpose the multiple artery. I, I want to show you the anterior and the posterior ramine of C1, C2 spinal nerve. I want to show you the anterior and the posterior loops of C1, C2 nerve. I want to show you the ganglion of C1, C2. And uh, I'm going to show you the C1, C2 fixation technical on cadaver. And also, I'm going to show you how to skeletalize the jugular bulb while keeping the integrity of mastoid cortex. I invite everybody to join my next week's webinar. So I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I will be very happy to have comments or questions from audience. Thank you. The very good, uh, uh, Dr. excellent. And I'm so glad that Victor's here because uh, yeah. he can, you know, I'm not a neurosurgeon. And yeah, yeah. He He's a neuroanatomist, and uh, I'm, I'm dying to hear what he says. Okay, Victor. Unmute there, Victor. Unmute, 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 unmute. There you uh, go. Very nice, very nice uh, demo, Jandong. Uh, uh, the anatomy of uh, facial nerve is very important, especially yeah. for... Uh, skull brain, brain surgeons because uh, uh, I think uh, there are several approaches mm -hmm. in which uh, we can damage the facial nerve. Uh, the most common is um, the uh, transigomatic approach uh, and in that uh, uh, surgery you can damage the superior trunk of the facial nerve. And the second one is uh, exceris is uh, resection of uh, neurinomas, especially GN neurinomas, in which uh, uh, the facial nerve can be damaged. So uh, the anatomy of the facial nerve is very important to reconstruction of uh, this nerve. For example, if uh, we are going to do the hypoglossal, uh, hypoglossal facial nerve anastomosis uh, is uh, very important to know the anatomy of the facial nerve. And this is a very nice procedure to reconstruct the uh, facial nerve. Uh, we can improve uh, movements of uh, facial nerve. Uh, there, are, there have been several uh, research several studies about uh, the recovery of uh, function of facial nerve doing this kind of uh, surgery, the hypoglossal facial nerve. I think that's the reason to know anatomy, if not, uh, if not as uh, very, very detailed as you show us, because uh, you have been working very hard doing this kind of dissection because you show us complete anatomy uh, of uh, facial nerve and this is not easy 
Of course, we are not going to make that dissection in most of the surgical procedures, but uh, to know it is very important, especially for this uh, uh, possibility of uh, damage the facial nerve. So congratulations, you are doing a really nice job. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it's very, very useful for uh, young brain surgeons, uh, for residents, and also for uh, experienced uh, brain surgeons. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Professor Victor. Yes, I know, I, as I have said to you, Already, there are so many, many people show you the. Uh, already, there are so many, many people show you the uh, intracranial and the intratemporal facial nerve is well known. And you do not need me to show your kidney's anatomy. My purpose is to show you some rare branches of facial nerve net. Maybe you have never heard it before, or maybe you have heard, it, but you have never seen before. I usually, I want to do this. Thank you, Professor Victor. Yeah. Good morning, Harshad. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Victor. I'm sorry to interrupt. Harshad. Hello, Harshad. Hi, Victor. How are you? Fine. Very nice. Very nice to see you. Yeah. Very nice yes. to see you too. Yes, Yang Dong. Excellent yeah. dissection. Wonderful. It is shown in such a great details. Probably we have not heard many things. And you have shown to the facial nerve, trigeminal nerve, hypoglossal nerve, and very, very small nerves. I was just recollecting when you were talking about the auricular nerves. When we do a awake craniotomy, uh, post auricular nerve, we block these nerves, you know, without understanding really which nerves we are blocking, like supraorbital, periauricular, post auricular, occipital, and we do a craniotomy and awake anesthesia. And you have shown those so beautifully those nerves, how they can supply to the various parts, including the skull and going down. Very, very detailed. I must say you have done a lot of hard work to uh, detail about this nerves. Vidian nerve, you have followed right up to Vidian canal and GSPN, the fifth nerve. Wonderful, wonderful. You, you, you have done a very detailed this dissection of these nerves. I have seen dissections, I have heard lectures, but not so much detail. But I am really impressed. Congratulations, hard work. And it is very, very important to understand the anatomy. And we cannot, you know, after 35 years of my practice, I feel I am still a raw person and I want to learn more. And you people are showing wonderful jobs. And of course, I, Victor will agree with me every time you learn something new. And this is something great, great. And we have invested our time rather than you know anything else. So superb. Congratulations. And I look forward for C1, C2 anatomy. I was never aware that the C1 nerve root can, the rootlets can go to the hypoglossal. So this is something very interesting. Very interesting. And yes, many things we have not seen in facial nerve. We, as a surgeon, always look at the either CP angle or when we are doing the subtemporal approach or we are doing kawasis, that time we look at that. But we don't go into so details. Where is the nerve going and what is happening? Very nice. Very nice, young dog. Very well done <laughs> and super de demonstration. Yes. And I, I have heard you with great interest how you are doing. And many things I was not Okay. I'm, I, I've, I've been enlightened. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Hasha. And uh, you know the Professor Adua. Adua is my mentor. You know? Yes, you know, he's my, I... my good friend. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, he will you... be very pleased to see you in C1, C2 area. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 have, you have seen, you have watched his C1, C2 fixation in lab surgery. And I yes, many to, times. Yes, I, yes, yes. Yeah, and I and I invite to see you the C one C two fixation on the table next Saturday. <laughs> you you know uh, this this would also appeal to plastic surgeons and uh, ENT physicians, correct? Yeah, yeah. correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, so they would find this series very interesting. 
yeah, yeah. You know, I I do not show you. I do not show you the terminal branches of facial nerve, uh, which the, uh, which means the where the the facial nerve enter the the meti muscle because now it's beyond my scope. But in the future, maybe I will conduct some plastic operations. For example, the face the face deep surgery or facial rehabilitation operation. That's just like the the professor Victor said, the hypoglossal nerve and the facial nerve uh, anatomosis and also others, for example, the babysitter approach, the babysitter procedure, or the the uh, particle uh, muscular muscular transformation for facial rehabilitation. I think uh, at that time I will show you this details anatomy of my mating muscle and the terminal terminal branches of facial nerve. Sure, we are looking forward. Thank you. We have a sizable audience in China, 3,800 people watching. Uh, is that that must be pretty, is that typical or is that a little high for you, uh, Gendong? Yeah, I... I, I, just, I saw I, I I put the graphic up. I can put it up again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can, you, see, you, can you see that okay? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh three seven six seven. So that's a that's a good audience. No, no, no. Maybe maybe only about five hundred patients because this is accumulation. Also, also this 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 number included the audience oh, from two sections. Oh, it's a cumulative, cumulative. Okay. A cumulative, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they put, my, they put my and presentation in one series, and okay. then the, you know, the number you can see is the total total audience. Maybe oh, only, okay. maybe only four to five hundred. Well, that's a sizable amount. That's that's a sizable amount, but don't believe. Yeah, yeah. The people, the interest, according to yeah. our panel, is a couple of people, but there are a lot of people watching. Uh, yeah. Any, and and maybe, any, go ahead. And uh, maybe, ahead. maybe near one thousand ENT surgeon uh, join this webinar in China. <laughs> oh, good, very good. Okay, well, I look forward to waking up, Victor, again next week. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Next week, and okay, thank you very much, Yang Dong. And see, thanks, you, sir, see you sir. next week, yeah. Thanks, see thanks you next week. Yeah, thank you Bye-bye. Yeah, see you. See you next week. Yeah, yeah, see you.